This is part two of our mini-series on protective devices and this video is about AFDDs or arc fault detection devices. New regulations that have been introduced into the wiring regulations mean that certain properties must now have AFDD protection. AFCIs or arc fault circuit interrupters have been in use in America for some time and have shown a beneficial reduction in electrical fires. It is hoped then that AFDDs will show similar reductions in electrical fires in the UK. An AFDD is an arc fault detection device, a protective device that is installed in a consumer unit to protect a circuit from electrical arcing faults. An AFDD is not the same as an SPD. They are different protective devices. They do different things. An AFDD is installed one for every protected circuit. Whereas just one SPD is fitted per board or consumer unit. What do the regulations say? An arc fault detection device or AFDD must be installed at the origin of any single phase AC final circuit that supplies socket outlets with a rated current up to and including 32 amps in the following types of premises. And these are HMOs or houses of multiple occupancy, HRRB or higher risk residential buildings, in purpose built student accommodation and in care homes. HMO is short for houses of multiple occupancy and these are generally larger houses that have been divided into separate bedrooms and private areas with often more than one family living there as separate families. They may have their own bathroom areas or they may share common kitchens and bathrooms etc. AFDDs are a requirement in HMOs. An HRRB is a higher risk residential building. At the moment there is no clear definition of an HRRB but after the Grenfell fire and tragedy there may be specified requirements in the future. But at the moment an HRRB is suggested to be a residential building that is either 18 metres in height or greater or it has six or more storeys, whichever comes first. And AFDDs are a requirement. Purpose-built student accommodation has a requirement for AFDDs but this only applies to a building that was specifically designed and built as student accommodation. Large houses that have been converted would not fall into this category, but they may fall into the HMO category, in which case the requirement for AFDDs will still apply. Care homes for the elderly or infirm have particular evacuation difficulties due to the age, health and mobility of the residents, their mental health state and perhaps administered drugs that may reduce their awareness and response to problems. AFDDs are a requirement in these premises. With domestic dwellings there is no requirement to install AFDDs in single occupancy dwellings but it is a recommendation that should be made to the householder. On a periodic inspection this could be logged as C3 improvement recommended or noted in the comments on a test certificate. This will be a written record of your recommendation and it is then up to the customer to make that decision. We must consider other buildings. Just because a building is not an HMO, HRRB etc does not mean that AFDDs cannot be installed. Some buildings or their occupants are at increased risk from electrical fires and it may be a good idea to install AFDDs in these premises as a fire prevention precaution. Think about thatched roof cottages, wooden buildings, healthcare centres and hospitals. And then there are veterinary premises, stables, historic and heritage buildings to consider. What circuits must be protected by AFDDs? At the moment this is only socket circuits up to and including 32 amps being a requirement. 
but any building may benefit from other circuits having AFDD protection. Consider a thatched roof, where AFDD protection for lighting circuits that pass through the roof space would be a good recommendation. All circuits can have AFDD protection if the customer wants it. The regulations say that AFDDs shall be placed at the origin of the circuit that is being protected. The origin is usually the consumer unit or distribution board. The regulations also say that the use of AFDDs does not obviate the need to apply one or more other measures provided in other clauses of BS 7671. But what does not obviate mean? It means that other safety measures, as specified in the regulations, may still be required. For example, overload protection and additional protection such as RCDs. So to recap, an AFDD is installed at the origin of each circuit that is to be protected. The present requirement is only for final socket circuits up to and including 32 amps to have AFDD protection. Shown here is an AFDD of two module width. It will take up two spaces in the consumer unit. When an arcing fault is detected, the AFDD will disconnect the supply to that circuit. An AFDD is a microprocessor type device that is pre-programmed to look for the particular waveforms that are produced by electrical arcing faults. And shown here is a single module with AFDD. Switching a light on or off using a vacuum cleaner or a drill will not produce the waveform that the AFDD is looking for. It will not disconnect the circuit just because the light was turned off. Shown here is my interpretation of switching and arcing waveforms. The top waveform is the short burst waveform that turning a light on or off might produce. It is not what the AFDD is looking for and therefore the AFDD does nothing. The lower waveform is prolonged and matches the style and length of electrical disruption that the AFDD has been programmed to look for. When the AFDD detects this waveform, it will disconnect the circuit. AFDDs come in a variety of module types and as the technology behind AFDDs grows, we must expect to see different styles becoming available. Some AFDDs come as a single unit that must be paired with an MCB or Mini RCBO that are designed specifically as a match for the AFDD. This allows the flexibility of choosing different ratings and types and being able to mix and match, but you cannot mix parts from different manufacturers. The AFDD will have a health status indicator light that will show different colours to indicate status. There will also be a test button and some AFDDs now have auto test capability. The two halves, the two modules shown on the previous slide, will clip together and a connecting lever between them will cause the MCB or RCBO to trip when the AFDD detects an arcing fault. AFDDs are available as single module combined units that include the AFDD part and an RCBO part. This type of module makes retrofitting very easy, but cost can be a limiting consideration as to how many are installed in each consumer unit. Every manufacturer will have their own preferred method of indicating the health status of the AFDD, and here is one possible layout. Positioning of an AFDD should be considered so that the new AFDD works seamlessly with other protective devices that are already fitted. In this drawing, the AFDDs are installed downstream of an existing RCD, so the requirement is for an AFDD and MCB at the origin of each protected circuit. In this layout, there is no RCD, and the decision is made to have an AFDD and RCBO for each circuit. Here, there is an AFDD and RCBO installed before the RCD, with AFDDs and MCBs installed after the RCD. Next, we must consider series and parallel arc faults. What are they? In a series arc fault, the arc is happening in just one conductor. 
usually where a single conductor has been damaged and there is a small gap that the arc jumps across. This type of arcing fault will be detected by an AFDD but unlikely to be detected by an RCD. A parallel arc fault between line and neutral will require the damaged conductors to be quite close to each other. The arc will jump across the gap and generate significant heat in the process, somewhere in the region of 5000 to 6000 degrees Celsius, and this is where the danger of fire comes from. We can have parallel arcing faults between line and earth, either to exposed earth or CPC conductors, or to metallic parts. This can be a particular problem in socket boxes where the bare CPC has not been adequately sleeved. There are lots of reasons for arcing faults and some might include crushing under furniture, doors, machinery or vehicles, rodent damage, weathering and UV exposure etc. Or pulling cables through trunking and not using glands at entry points to electrical cabinets. We could have loose connections and strain on cables or pierced insulation by nails, drills etc. And of course bad workmanship when installing or maintaining an installation. A brief summary then. AFDDs are installed at the origin of the circuit they protect. One AFDD for each protected circuit. The board or circuit must have other protected devices installed as required by the regulations. RCDs, RCBOs, MCBs, fuses and so on. AFDDs are a requirement for certain building types, HMOs, HRRBs, purpose-built student accommodation and care homes. In this video we've looked at AFDDs. In a previous video we took a look at MCBs and fuses. And still to come in this mini-series on protected devices are SPDs and RCDs. Thank you for watching, it really is appreciated and we hope that you found this video useful. Please subscribe to our channel to get access to all of our videos and remember to click on notify to be sure of not missing our next video. And you will find even more information, videos and help on our website at learnelectrics.com. And don't forget that you can also type in Learn Electrics, all one word, into the YouTube search bar to go directly to our channel at any time from any computer. We are constantly adding new videos to our channel, don't miss the next one. And once again, thank you for watching and we hope to see you again very soon.